Now we can talk about the Caesar competition. And Caesar is short for Competition for Authenticated Encryption, Security, Applicability, and Robustness. So uh, it is shortened as Caesar. So this competition was uh, announced in uh, 2013. Uh, and the deadline for submissions were uh, around March of 2014. So this competition was ended in 2017, and it was a competition focused on authenticated encryption. The aim was not directly lightweight authenticated encryption, but it was a general authenticated encryption competition. But some of the winners were lightweight algorithms, so uh, this is why it is important for us. So I will briefly mention what this competition was about and then uh, talk about the uh, Ascon algorithm, which was the winner in the lightweight category. Actually, there were two winners. Ascon was the first choice. So this competition actually started in 2014 when the first submissions arrived. Uh, unlike previous uh, NIST competitions, uh, this competition was not held by NIST, by the way. And the software of the submissions uh, could be sent two months later. And in 2015, second round candidates were announced. And uh, this time, algorithms were allowed to do some tweaks in their algorithm. Uh, and the competition page is written here. And uh, AISU actually uh, uh, Get 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 us together uh, every attack on this competition on this algorithm and uh, these two websites are will contains a lot of information about the competition. Actually, I will show you some screenshots from these websites. So from the uh, zoo, we can see which algorithms uh, has which properties and so on. But let's look at the timetable. Uh, Hardware uh, implementations were also sent in 2015 for the modified versions. And in 2016, third round candidates were announced. Again, uh, competitors were allowed to do some tweaks in their algorithm and the finals were an, uh, announced in 2016. And at the end of 2017, the final portfolio was announced. And uh, let's see some examples of the algorithms. So these are the algorithms that were eliminated in round one. Uh, you can see some, uh, and I think the overlined algorithms were withdrawn. And these are the designers of the algorithms. And there were no direct submission from Turkey, but uh, a few Turkish cryptographers were uh, participated in this uh, they participated in this competition and you can see their names in the in this picture actually so a ezu website actually uh, explains uh, main properties of the algorithms in a table like this so you can see what kind of uh, algorithm it is like block cipher point or stream cipher and uh, what kind of primitives they rely on some of the designs were using aes inside them and so on and these are other properties that the algorithms support. So these were from round one. And round two, these are the algorithms that were eliminated. Again, you can see some Turkish names in the list. And uh, again, AEZU, from AEZU, you can uh, see properties of the algorithms in round two. But finally, in uh, I think March 2018, uh, the finalists were announced. Actually, in the tentative timetable, it were expected to be announced in 2017, but the finalists were announced in 2018, March 6. As far as this, as far as I remember, it was in a RAM session of the FSC com, uh, conference. So these are the winners. And uh, you can see for which use case they won. And these ca uh, cases were uh, specified like this. Case one is lightweight applications, case two high performance, and case three is defense in depth. So as you can see for the lightweight applications, which is case one, Ascon and Acorn are the uh, in final portfolio. 
But as far as I remember, Ascon is the first choice and Acorn is the second choice as it is listed in the web page. So this is why we are uh, actually focusing on ASCON in this lecture. So let's look at it, ask, let's look at ASCON. It is designed by Christoph, Maria, Florin and uh, uh, Martin. Uh, its type is the sponge construction. And in the sponge construction, actually the use primitive is a substation permutation network. It has two block sizes, depends on which ASCON you use. Uh, it is either 64 bits or 128 bits. Actually, it depends on what rate of encryption you need. The state size is 320 bits. The key is 128 bits. And actually, this is in version 1.1 and 1.2. Uh, this is the case. But in the initial version, 1.0, there was also a version where ASCON supported uh, 96 bits. But uh, there were no need for such a short key and actually designers removed it, which I think is a correct choice. Uh, the nonce is 128 bits, tag is 128 bits. Number of runs where this permutation is applied actually depends on the version you use and it depends on the part of the algorithm. At the initialization part, it is 12, but in the encryption part, it is either eight or six, depending again on the version you are using. So I will show you in a picture in a minute. ASCON has uh, good properties. It's a single pass. So single passing the data would allow you both ciphertext and uh, tag uh, instead of the previous designs that we have seen so far in this lecture where you use a block cipher twice or use a block cipher and the hash function together. Here you are only using the single algorithm and passing uh, over once on the data, but at the end you produce ciphertext and the message authentication code, which is tag. It is online inverse free. Inverse free means that the encryption and direction are in the same direction. Uh, so you don't need to implement the inverse of the algorithm. It has some security proofs. It, uh, it is lightweight. It's fast in software and hardware. And uh, you don't need to use any table lookup. So the SBOX. Uh, that this algorithm use is uh, can be actually implemented by a small number of instructions, like I think 20 to 30 instructions. So instead of uh, performing a table lookup for the SBOX operation, you can simply perform these operations, uh, which are just XOR and uh, shift operations and so on. So uh, this is uh, this would provide timing resistance against some side channel attacks. So let's look at the big picture of ASCON. So you have an internal state which is put inside this permutation. So your internal state is 320 bits. And initially, you fill it with initialization vector, key, and the nonce. So recall that nonce was 128 bits, and key was 128 bits. So you have a 64 bit of IV. So you put it inside this internal state and perform a permutation operation 12 times. So you mix the internal state by this operation. You perform a simple ex of key XOR here, but if you have associated data afterwards, uh, you take the first block of associated data, XOR it with the upper part of your internal state of R bits. Again, R depends on your choice. It is either 64 or 128 bit. But the main version, I think, is 64 bits. So you XOR your first 64 bits of your associated data and then perform the permutation operation. I think in the final version, this B is 6, not 8. So this way, you feed the associated data inside your permutation. Then after this part, uh, the encryption part begins where you produce ciphertext. But not every operation uh, requires associated data. So if you don't have any associated data, you can just remove this part of this figure. And uh, from initialization, you can go directly to the plain text processing. Again, it is similar to the XOR of associated data, but now you are uh, producing the XOR output as the ciphertext block. So this way you produce ciphertext, and at the end, uh, when every cipher text block is produced, you finally perform an XOR again with the key and perform a permutation again 12 times. And 
This time from the lower part of it, 128 bits uh, part is exhort with your master secret key and you produce the tag. So single passing the data, you produce the cipher text from here and you produce the tag from here. But now uh, all of the security depends what is inside this permutation P. So let's look at what it is. So we said that you have the internal state is 320 bits. So initially first row is IV, second and third row is your uh, key, which every, by the way, every row is 64 bits and last two rows are nodes. So initially you perform a, a constant addition operation. So these are the constants that you add. So they correspond to these bits, which is actually to break the symmetry in the cipher. Then you perform an S-box operation. So since we have five rows, there are five bits in every column. So we have 64 columns. So we perform this S-box operation, five by five S-box operation to every row. So 64 times in parallel. And this is the S-box of ASCON, uh, which is, uh, as far as I know, affine equivalent to the S-box of Ketchak. So of course you can perform this operation by 64 table lookups, which would be slow both in hardware and software, but instead uh, you can perform this operation, uh, I think in 20 to 30 instructions, which were specified in ASCON uh, uh, specification document, and it is uh, super fast. So this is why this SPAX is chosen actually. Then, so this was the confusion layer. We performed an uh, SBAX operation. Now the diffusion layer. Diffusion is uh, applied in rows. So each row is rotated and added to itself. So first row is uh, not, uh, denoted by X0. So you take the first row, X0, you rotate it 19 times. You also rotate it 28 times and exhort these three values to each other and the result is written here. And for the first row, you take X1, you rotate it 61 times and 39 times to the right and exhort these three values and obtain the first row and so on. So uh, diffusion layer is really simple. The operations are only XOR and rotation operations. So it is really fast both on software and hardware. So this is uh, one of the winners of the Caesar competition in the category of lightweight applications. But ASCON is also a, a competing algorithm in this uh, lightweight standardization competition. Uh, and it is currently in the second round and we will see if it will also win this competition or not.